Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Welcome to another episode of the Daily Pit Stop Post Race Yap. This is for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. I'm recording this literally just after the race, so it's quite it was it's very fresh in my mind. Um, we've got a lot of I think quite a couple of things to cover, but once again, I will like to say that for the Qatar Grand Prix pre race yap, it's pre recorded before this race because of my time constraint, I'm not able to film two videos in time and get everything edited out to you guys so what you see in the qatar pre-race yap is going to be like the analysis or the ideas or the predictions behind it are based on what has happened in the past few races or throughout the course of the season but for this one obviously i've already watched the las vegas grand prix and that's why this video is coming out to you a lot of things have happened let's jump right in but first of all max verstappen four-time world champion of course drop a like on the video if you guys are enjoying this series and subscribe for new around here and finally we can jump right in right to kick things off for the post race yeah it will be the race rating um i think i felt was actually quite a good race i mean we had the straights right ultimately and with the drs zones that are in place it's going to be a lot easier i guess for teams to go ahead and make plenty of overtakes there were plenty 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 of overtakes um pit stop strategy i think what was surprising was like the tires actually degraded a lot quicker than we've expected um the problem with the entire weekend was obviously the grip the lack of grip because of the cold temperature uh cold uh track temperature and of course atmosphere as well i think it was like always hovering around 17 16 15 degrees and i think sometimes track temperatures even went to like 12 degrees at some point which meant you had to do a lot of warm-up on the tires and the tires have to go to a really, really good temperature it's not easy for the drivers and a lot of them were obviously sliding uh, but i think i felt like there was plenty of action in terms of the championship wise i felt it was really straightforward um, we'll talk about that later when it comes to mclaren whether or not they had the pace but Max Verstappen, right, four-time world champion, um, he has deserved it and it just shows again when you've had such a good start to begin with and just by then from being consistent throughout the rest of the season despite not winning as many races, he's still able to create a really sizable gap and obviously one can argue like McLaren have not been the best uh, when they had the car at their disposal, they were not able to maximise the number of points and ultimately because of that, that also affected them from scoring the most number of points to even close down Max Verstappen a lot of factors but again i think the expectation when mclaren came in was that they didn't expect to be challenging for a driver's title and i think now what's more important for them is the constructors which we'll talk about that later as well but with that being said crazy things have happened i think in this race it's pretty convincing to me like in terms of a pretty decent grand prix i think i was quite entertained throughout the entire race it wasn't like boring um i think i've seen some boring races this year but like this one was pretty up there i think Hamilton climbing all the way that was something as well and obviously George Russell winning the race uh we'll talk about Pierre Gasly also later but I think overall it's a 7 out of 10 for me not as great as Brazil I think Brazil was like to me I think Brazil has got to be like one of the race, races of the season because of how good it was and how crazy it was you know with the weather everything came into play like I think it was more like a Vegas kind of extend where you know all the carts were being thrown on the table uh, at brazil it was really a test for all the drivers but this one with a drier track ultimately i think in terms of imagine it rain in vegas and the temperatures were even colder i think they'll be driving on ice um but with that being said i think seven out of ten it, it just shows to me like it was a really really decent race but i just don't think it's like you know a crazy crazy kind of race but yeah nonetheless i really enjoyed this race so we're going to go through general thoughts. Uh, what a drive. I actually predicted Verstappen because I just felt like, you know, Verstappen would come into the weekend feeling very positive um, with the intention that he would want to try to fight. But again, he didn't really have much at stake in general. It's just like as though he had to finish ahead of Norris and, uh, you know, just do the best that he could. But I felt like I was thinking like, you know, Verstappen was, would be able to, to push further. But I mean, he, he, he knew where the car was and obviously Red Bull with a missing rear wing, uh, as in they brought the wrong rear wing in for this weekend obviously that's their fault now with the right rear ring in place would Verstappen have been able to fight for the win not exactly too sure um, obviously there are certain amounts like half a second maybe lost throughout the entirety of the lap when it comes to you know being on the straights and stuff so maybe the rear wing could have changed the complex of the race and we could have seen a very dominant Max win again but I think to him you know when he's won his fourth title it doesn't really matter but for me at least, what a drive has actually got to go to Lewis Hamilton. Now, obviously George Russell won the race, which is impeccable from him. Like from the start since FP1, top, top, I think. I don't think he topped FP3, but I think he topped two of the sessions. The Hamilton topping two of the sessions. I mean, Mercedes were really up there in the practice sessions. And I think when, when we went to qualifying, I think it was very high expectations for both Mercedes to be up there. I think top three. 
Obviously, Hamilton did have a good Q3. He started 10th. Now, had he started higher, would he have challenged George Russell for the win? My answer was also been a yes, because in the race itself, Hamilton really, really showed good pace. And I think this is like a Lewis Hamilton that we have been so used to seeing, like a really, really good drive from Lewis Hamilton. And he was really closing George Russell down as well at the latter stages of the race. It wasn't smooth sailing for Russell, at least towards the end. And it sort of replicates Spa to a certain extent, but obviously Spa Lewis was a lot closer to George Russell. But a really good race uh, for, from Lewis. Bad qualifying, which I think if you had a really bad qualifying and a not so good race, like you, let's say like finish seven or eighth, I think I would put in God awful drive because he really had the car to win the race. Uh, but ultimately, when you've got from 10th place to second place, you've got to give the credit where credit is due. And I felt like he's done what he could. I think he's like damage limitation in some sense. But of course, I felt like there were points where maybe, maybe he could have fought for the win, but it only would have happened if he had qualified higher. But Hamilton with what a drive. I mean, really, really good drive from Hamilton. It's really applaudable. Obviously, Russell is up there and Russell has been impeccable. And I think... If it weren't for Hamilton, it would have been Russell. So those are the two main drivers which I felt like really showed pace in the car. Mercedes have been the shock team, I think, this weekend. And if you remember my pre-race, yeah, I was like, I don't really think, didn't really think Mercedes would come out with such pace, but they have done it. So props to you, Mercedes. For God Awful Drive, now this one I found it really difficult to like pinpoint a specific driver to put in. Now, I can be honest with you right now, I've actually put no one. Now, people might be surprised, like, how have I put no one? And let me say, like, there were a couple of drivers which I would probably argue that probably would have fit that role. I think, first of all, um, Colo Pinto was definitely on top of the list. I mean, he was the only driver who crashed this weekend. Uh, yesterday, in qualifying, he was the only driver to misjudge that final corner uh, prior to the, you know, long straight before you get that turn back to turn one to, to finish the lap. Williams, again, had a certain car, like a car that probably could have gotten them somewhere again this weekend. And I think, again, it's sort of like lost potential. Whether or not it's points guaranteed, I don't exactly think so. But I think there was, there was a certain amount of potential. It's competitive. I think definitely I, I, I felt, you know, that competitiveness. But Albon knocked out in Q1. And Colopinto crashed in Q2. And uh, yeah, I mean, Colopinto didn't have a bad race, so then I couldn't exactly put Colopinto there. I mean, maybe if I were to really put a person, like if I were to really choose, it would have been Colopinto, but did he have the worst drive? Like, outright a really bad drive? Probably not. I mean, you saw the pace that Alpine had from Pierre Gasly yesterday, but Alcon finished 17th in the race. It's very, like, topsy-turvy in my opinion, and... I don't really know how to put it into perspective, so that's why I've kind of put no one. Maybe like after recording this video, recording this session, after editing and after uploading, then maybe the name will probably pop up. But I think because everything is as fresh as it can get, like for me at the top of my head, unless I'm being very stupid right now, which I probably am, but I can't really seem to think of anyone that will fit this category. I think a lot of people have had average races in general, but like I think standouts, there were quite a few. So that's my take on that. And of course, team of the race, I think I don't need to say this anymore. Mercedes, 100%. Fantastic. Uh, pretty much maximum points, less the fastest lap. They've done what they could. Fourth place in the championship secured. Now they're just basically fighting for glory, really, when it comes to both drivers trying to get the best position that they can. Will they be able to bring this into Qatar? Uh, I don't know. But last year's Qatar race, Mercedes were pretty good. Obviously, Hamilton did crash in the actual race itself but Mercedes showed really, really good pace I think George Russell finished on the podium I can't remember now despite recording that video already um, but ultimately I think there is a certain level of potential in Mercedes for next race as well and I think they could be quite competitive but you never know really and you guys see what I have to say for that video uh, when it comes out but you never know I think as of now when I'm the way I'm seeing Mercedes if they're able to have a little bit of trajectory to the rest of the season we could see a Mercedes that's actually really going to fight for that whilst you know the three other teams ahead are arguably fighting for a championship the constructors Mercedes could be the one that spoils the party you never know um but that's a team as I mentioned it earlier it's going to be Williams they really had the potential for to fight for points this weekend as I said Colopins were crashing men like the car could have gone to Q3 or at least even fight for Q3 P11 maybe yeah but because of that no chance Albon didn't have a good weekend either DNF in the race as well, which we'll go through later, the standings. And because of that, some plastic bag in the radiator duck that had to get him out of the race. 
and Williams again, you know, another crash that had to deal with Colapinto again, having to fix a lot of the damages. And ultimately, like Williams had a really, really rough weekend, and they've had two consecutive really, really rough weekends now. But at the same time, like it's just not been good really from Williams, despite having the car that I felt like had a good level of potential. But ultimately, yeah, just not it really this weekend. And I think Williams will have to read it deep and, and see how they can. You know, do something for the for the rest of the season. Really, I as I said, I don't think unless they're gonna have another Alpine flip result from Brazil, I don't exactly think that they're gonna fight for eighth place and above anymore. It's pretty much the ninth place secure for themselves now. All you've just got to do is either they don't put any more upgrades because it's nothing worth fighting for, or they can just risk it and try to put as much as they can. But yeah. I just felt it was a really bad weekend for Williams in general. They were kind of nowhere, and in fact, if anything, I think they were quite at the bottom, unfortunately. Now, of course, with the starting grid, a uh, couple of shocks from qualifying, but I felt, again, it was a really, really, really good qualifying. Um, Stroll, obviously, to begin with him, right, um, the car, I think, they had a problem in FP3, but they managed to get the car running, and obviously, you wouldn't expect him to do well anyways because it's Lance Stroll. So, P20 for him. Avalchi Bottas, 19. Joe, 13th and Joe is quite a surprise. I think this weekend is really showed a level of potential. Um, other shocks include obviously Albon. I felt like he shouldn't have been in Q, knocked down in Q1. Fernando Alonso. I don't see him knocking out, being knocked down in Q1 either. Despite I know that Aston Martin wouldn't have the pace, but did I really expect him to completely lose pace? Not really, to be honest. And if you compare the results in the race classification, Alonso finished 11th. So there is certain pace in 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 the Aston Martin this weekend. But just like maybe one lap pace just wasn't enough, or maybe Alonso was not able to get everything together. Sergio Perez, I still think it's a shock Q1 exit, but ultimately when you compare Sergio Perez to Sergio Perez, it's the same guy, isn't it? So um yeah, just terrible from Perez really. Uh Lawson, I think okay, I guess. Uh Colin Pinto with a crash obviously men like okay, so then when Colin Pinto crashed, you had, you had drivers like Max and Ocon could have potentially improved. Could have. And I think they probably stood a chance, but ultimately because of um, the crash, they couldn't do that, which is a risk ultimately when you want to be one of the last few cars to go and, 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 and you know, f try to put a lap in. You want to try to get the best condition, I guess, when the, when the track is ideally ramped up the most. You do take the risk of someone in front of you crashing or a yellow flag that would have ruined your lap. Obviously, George Russell finished on pole, a qualified pole, sorry. Uh, and he took the risk, really, of saying, like, I want to be at the back of the queue. He did that, finished about a tenth ahead of Carlos Sainz, I remember. That was great. Obviously, the shot of qualifying was Pierre Gasly to put the car in Q3, P3 of Q3. Brilliant. To, to qualify ahead of Leclerc, Verstappen, Norris, Piastri and Hamilton. That was great. But obviously, I think the expectation coming into the race would have been that he would not have been able to keep the cars behind really it's going to be really really difficult for him and in the race you can really see that obviously the dnf happened for him which we'll see again later um with this uh i think it was like smoke coming out of the back of his car mechanical problem i think and because of that yeah obviously he couldn't finish the race which is a very it's upsetting because i, I felt like he could have finished in the points rather easily and i think the confidence that was going to the race was quite high but such as the way, you know, things work in Formula 1, you know, sometimes things don't go your way. And I think this is like another reliability issue that I think Alpine have not really had that in a while, actually. When I think at the start of the season, there were a lot of problems, but now it's like, it's quite rare. So I think this is something that they're going to have to look through it again, Alpine, but really good for, for Pierre Gasly. He had so much potential in that race in this weekend in general, and especially when to qualify Q3, P3, um, but ultimately, yeah, really unfortunate but otherwise like Norris and Piastri as I've said I just didn't feel like McLaren would have had the pace Ferrari have shown me that they had the pace this weekend but again had Mercedes with a shock I don't know if Hamilton didn't qualify up there Volkenberg in P9 slowed in P7 I guess they are like the outliers but again you know they show like they're really important for their team and they show they can really perform for their team when it's needed to be Magnussen pretty close in P12 as I said I think he was improving and he could have stood a chance of qualifying uh, for Q3, but obviously that didn't happen. Now, as we move on to the race, which just happened for me as time of recording, it happened earlier. Um, yeah, obviously, Mercedes 1 2, perfect weekend for them. A Ferrari P uh, 3 4, a McLaren 6 7, which meant that the gap between Ferrari and McLaren have obviously closed a little bit as expected. As I said, this is a Ferrari 
track to me compared to McLaren. I said that, you know, this was the weekend where Ferrari needed to just put everything together and get as many points on the board as possible. As I said, you know, because of the fact that they didn't expect Mercedes to be as competitive this weekend, I felt like the possibility of them actually um, closing the gap even further was there. Had Mercedes not been the, the car to beat this weekend, which is, again, as I said, it's, it's, it's that big of a surprise for everyone. But with what we've seen now, um, yeah, I think it's also a lost opportunity slightly for Ferrari. I mean, that's probably three and four is like the best they could have finished looking at the performance of all the cars this weekend. But just like, you know, had them had a better car, I think the gap could be closed a lot more. But again, you know, going to next weekend in Qatar, when in my opinion, at least it's a very McLaren-esque track, the high speed corners, which McLaren are going to tackle a lot better than the Ferraris because Ferraris are suited more for the low speed corners. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting how next weekend is going to pan out. But ultimately, the gap's been closed, so there is a little bit of damage being done uh, with that. Obviously, we're stepping in P5. Uh, Hulkenberg, Snowder, 8th and 9th, obviously getting points. And because Hulkenberg scoring 4 points and Alpine scoring none, New Poir, that meant that Haas have obviously climbed back up to 6th in the Constructors a point ahead of Alpine um, and I think the racing balls have obviously gotten two more points so now the gap is at four points between the three teams which is still very close uh, obviously Perez finished in P10 uh, didn't really have a really bad race I think ultimately again got awful drive could have been Sergio Perez uh, which I think was the person that I put and I think he was pretty close to that but the reason why again I didn't put Perez as got awful drive is because I mean he did ultimately score a point and considering his performances all the while, this is like not, not the worst drive from him really. He had some good overtakes. The double overtake on that straight was really good from Sergio Perez. Vintage Perez kind of move or arguably like it reminded me of a Danny Ricardo kind of move in Baku. So it wasn't like the worst. It's just him being him essentially. It's not like relatively speaking like he has such a bad race. Like the disparity isn't big. It's just Sergio Perez being Sergio Perez, not doing his best. Or the cars, no, he's not at one with the car because of that's not able to eke out performance when we expect him to. But yeah, Alonso P11, um, which again showed like the car probably had a little bit of pace, but maybe just not enough for the points. Stroll in 15, obviously climbed up a little bit. Uh, Joe in 13, at some point he was running in the points, and I was like, maybe this could be the chance where Sauber actually get a point, but to no avail, um, still pointless. Um, throughout this entire season yeah but Lawson not really a good race from him either Ocon I felt it was a terrible race from him Valtteri I mean also in no man's land yeah it's 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 a very interesting one really for like the the, the back markers um, just not really good race from them which is why I say like everyone's such a either bang on average or like a really just like where kind of race you know where it's not it's very hard to pinpoint like who had the worst race arguably uh, because like for example Bottas right Salvo just don't have the pace but again if we were to compare him and, Bo and Joe because Joe started higher a little bit more potential for Joe to have done better arguably when you start higher you, you do tend to finish higher probability wise it's, there's a lot of things behind it yeah but ultimately Albon and Gasly both suffering DNFs and that was how the race ended ultimately I apologize for that um, but it's raining really heavily um, but ultimately Norris having the fastest lap and obviously getting the point Again, it's like damage limitation, I guess, for McLaren uh, with regards to the constructors. So with that being said, let's have a look at the driver standings. Obviously, Max Verstappen, champion of the world for the fourth time. I should have actually changed the A to a 4. Give him one second. There you go, A to a 4. Uh, Verstappen there, 403 points. No chance for um, Norris to actually catch up anymore. Um... Yeah, otherwise, I think it's quite straightforward again. Signs closing up to Piastri. That'll be a very tasty fight for P4 in the standings. Obviously, Russell Hamilton probably still can fight for a little bit for that. Um, Hulkenberg and Sonoda maybe still can fight for a little bit for that. Pierre Gasly, Stroll, maybe Ocon still can fight for a little bit for that. Um, but otherwise, like, I think in terms of what I'm seeing in the drama standings, it's pretty much there. Unless, again, something drastic happens. Things can change. It is Formula 1. When nothing is set in stone, when nothing is mathematically possible, we always believe that there's always an opportunity for teams to take it. Um, but ultimately, as I said, Verstappen has obviously won the championship, so that one is out of the picture. But like, if Norris just had a DNF and Leclerc wins the next race, we could see you know a change in even in like P two, P three in the standing. So 
as much as Norris is unable to catch Verstappen anymore, in some sense, I think he also needs to be slightly wary of Charles Leclerc potentially chasing him down in the standings as well. Um, well yeah, driver standings pretty basic, really. The bottom three are still at the bottom three. And as for the constructors, obviously McLaren at 608 points. Now the gap between them and Ferrari at 24 points, which is not a lot, honestly. Um, as though it's, as I said, you know, McLaren, what they need to do now is try to just ensure that the deficit to, to Ferrari is as minimal as possible or they're able to extend that gap. I don't see Red Bull challenging because ultimately it's like just Verstappen only. Again, Perez, whether or not he's going to chat, he's going to help the team or if he's able to find that pace in the car, I, I really doubt it. So that's going to be a problem. But as I said, Mercedes, comfortable. P4, no one's going to chase them down and neither can they catch up to Red Bull. Uh, yes, the Martin, I guess they're still kind of safe, but it's 6th, 7th and 8th, that's what we're talking about, right? The fight for 6th place in the Constructors is still pretty much up there. Um, we'll see what happens with that, really. Uh, it's going to be very interesting, but yeah, enough with the Constructors and the driver standings. Now let's jump into the teams one by one, individually, and see and discuss really how they performed uh, over the course of the weekend. So yeah, to begin with Alpine, straightforward. Slightly disappointing, I felt, um, to come by kind of... Fantastic Saturday, and to end it with a really depressing Sunday, um, and obviously to have new Park kind of points, which I felt when I felt like the team had some level of competitiveness this weekend. As I've said in my pre-race as well, I felt the Alpine were probably going to come into this weekend really competitive, and as I said, if I were to rank them, it would probably be Alpine, then Haas, and then um, Racing Bulls, which honestly on paper, I think I was quite, I think I was quite spot on with that one, but. Yeah, ultimately, Pierre Gasly P3 was a high, but a low was also him having a DNF. And somehow, Asaban Ocon was not able to to do something. I think, again, he, he was struggling with the car. It's almost like when Hamilton was struggling with the car uh, a lot, and Russell was doing very well. So this is like one of the weekends that sort of emulated that sort of um, idea. Yeah, but I just think it wasn't a good weekend for, for LP, but not as bad as the weekend as Williams, I felt. Um, because Williams had two cars running, ultimately. Um, yeah, I think Alpine, they're going to have to figure out what they're going to do because, I mean, they've been gifted. Uh, okay, gifted and not gifted, I guess. Uh, they really took the opportunity to, to get such a good result in Brazil and that should be still fresh on their minds. And I think when they come into the next two races, they really need to dig deep and see how they're going to try their best to, to make the best out of it, really. Um, nothing much else to say about Alpine. Um, as expected, when to expect them to get into Q3, great. Uh, to them to have actually a competitive weekend, Yes, arguably yes, but obviously DNF and yeah, just unfortunate, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I still think the P3 was definitely a surprise. Um, but w will that happen again next week? I don't know. Uh, I, I think I will just have a reservation still on that one. Uh, but ultimately, like, you know, Pierre Gasly is really at one with the car. His form is pretty good right now. Um, it's just unfortunate. I felt like this uh, reliability issue they had to face. Otherwise, I think he would score quite a good points. And as I said, the constructors constructor standings could have taken a, a much more of a turn of a twist than what we would have thought or at least what we're seeing now um as for the astons that's it really i don't have much to say not really at the pace this weekend uh just bang on average i think the focus is obviously on next year now um yeah they just got to got to i just just finished the season really and look forward to the next season hopefully it'll be better for them but ultimately um, yeah, just not not really good pace this weekend. Um, not competitive in my opinion. And uh, finishing eleventh, I guess for Alonso wasn't so bad. But Q one exits for the both uh, for both cars. That's not very good either. So nothing much to say about Aston really. Um, it's just another dull weekend for them. Their downfall needs to be um, explored, um, verified, and checked. Like how they got on some such a good season last year, and mid halfway through last season they started to plummet, and this year was just. A complete disaster so i'm not exactly too sure what's gonna happen as the mine next year would they somehow be good again i don't know but uh yeah that's that's, that's the mine really well ferrari um i think they've done what they could this weekend i think it's the maximum number of points they could have gotten and as i've said like how they knew that this was a stronger track but especially you know with how good mercedes were this weekend the shock team of the weekend yet you know ferrari was able to maximize i think it's a great weekend for ferrari in general um, they've done what they could. Nothing more to say. Uh, Carlos Sainz is, is fantastic as well. Leclerc was really good as well in the race, but not as good as Sainz. I think when it comes to Carlos Sainz, I think the pressure being off his shoulders, you know, he's going to leave and 
nothing, there's nothing on the table really. All he can do right, all he can do right now is just to get the best result over the line. Try to get as many points as possible for Ferrari and try to at least win the constructors. Like I think in some sense it's, it is a fairy tale ending. Like if Ferrari were to win the constructors by the end of the season, it's something that you know he'll be very very pleased. At least he had a really good achievement with the red team for that. But yeah, otherwise, uh, good good results from Ferrari. I've got nothing to complain. I think if a certain Mercedes had a stellar result, they would have been team of the weekend for me because they have. I don't think they put a foot wrong. Of course, against strategy, uh, when Carlos Sainz kept asking to box him, that was a little bit of a problem. But otherwise, I felt Ferrari executed it pretty well this weekend, especially even in qualifying. I felt it was pretty good, pretty smooth, pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, no problems with Ferrari. Great weekend. Um, they just need to be cautious next weekend. Uh, because they know it's not something that, that they're good at. It's going to be a tracking and struggle. And but if they're able to really get good points out of that Grand Prix, I, I think it's really good as well. I mean, with Haas, um, not bad. I mean, Hulkenberg, again, scoring points just shows how good Hulkenberg is. I really do hope the Sauber is competitive next year. Otherwise, it's going to be really upsetting for Hulkenberg, where he's really just driving a car. Just like Valtteri, see Valtteri Bottas this year, it's hurt so much. And when, when I, the way the form that Hulkenberg has been showing this season, there is really potential. I think if you give Hulkenberg a really, really good car next year, if Sauber is able to provide him that, I think we can really see a Hulkenberg that will shine. And like when he was taking over as a replacement driver at Racing Point in like 2020 during COVID times, yeah, if it's somehow like the, the car in terms of that, you know, the level of competitiveness is that high. I think Hulkenberg could be in a very, very, very good season next year. But yeah, with, with regards to Haas, again, pretty decent race. You know, where both drivers qualified, they've maintained that sort of level or like thereabouts that position and ultimately scored points, which was the aim, and get back sixth place temporarily, at least for now, in the constructors. I think Haas have to be, Haas have to be quite positive, uh, you know, coming out of this weekend. Um, again, I don't exactly know like how they can perform in the next two races, whether or not it's going to suit them because they just have been a pretty good midfield side this year, but it's not like, you know, out and out, like they've got strong tracks, weak tracks. Um, it's very hard to tell even this year when they've had a lot of tracks they're not good at, but they were still able to, I'd say, be somewhat competitive, like just finishing outside of the points, that kind of idea. So, so yeah, I think it's a really good weekend for us. Um, I mean... I believe that they deserve to finish sixth, in my opinion, but we'll see what happens in the last two races really for them. But as of this weekend, they should be pretty pleased, and especially Alcumbert getting scoring points. My man, what a goat. Brian, of course, kicks Alba. Um, nothing much to say. Really unfortunate. Uh, again, not scoring points, I guess. Uh, as I said, Joe was at some point in the points, um, but obviously the ties weren't going to go all the distance. But again, you know, I think Joe had a really good weekend this weekend, you know, to get into Q2. Um, put in a pretty competitive time to be honest and probably could have improved slightly more had uh Colapinto not crashed but ultimately starting 13th and finish 13th from Joe I I think it's good I mean again pressure off his shoulders ultimately after the announcement uh, that he's not going to be uh with Sauber anymore for for after the season um yeah I think it's quite positive I think from what I've seen from Joe this weekend as for Bottas it's just like yeah um, I mean maybe again some things have happened. I don't think he had a good weekend for sure. I mean, to, to qualify with 19th in, on, sa on Saturday or Friday rather, and then to finish the race in 18th, it's obviously not a step forward. Um, but it is what it is really for Sauber. I, again, I think the expectations are as low as it's going to get now and they're just going to come into, uh, for Sauber at least, you know, come into next season uh, with hopefully a more competitive car, as I've said earlier, with regards to Hulkenberg. And, uh, you know, hopefully just have a better car at the disposal and results go their way uh, with a new pair of drivers. So I think the two drivers right now, they're just driving for whatever it is that they can drive out of the car. And yeah, that's pretty much it, really. I, I, there's nothing much else to say about Kicks Alba. It's been the story of the season, really, for them with regards to just not scoring points at all. Right, McLaren. Um, I think to a certain extent, I think it's a little bit of a disappointing weekend. But again, knowing that they're not that strong around Las Vegas, um... I guess, yeah, maybe a little bit of damage limitation um, by just not, as in the gap between them and Ferrari, you know, three, four, six, seven, not the end of the world. Uh, could Probably could have been more, but at the same time, not really. I think when the race started, just didn't feel like 
the McLarens were going to fight for for anything really. Yeah, they were obviously better than the best best of the rest when it comes to the midfield. Like they would definitely not finish outside of the points, but with regards to fighting for the cars above them or ahead of them, just they really feel like they were going to have the pace. Um, yeah, I think Norris also probably conceded the championship really when he saw the pace of the car this weekend. And again, as I said, the only way for Norris to ever close that gap is if Verstappen was going to have a DNF. But ultimately, Verstappen didn't and he won the championship. Yeah, um, McLaren will really just have to focus on the instructors, as I've said, and really look forward to next race where they really have to dig deep and perform really extremely well for that so that they have a healthy lead coming to Abu Dhabi and secure that. I think it'll be quite... I wouldn't say a joke, but I think it'd be quite a meme if um, McLaren doesn't win any championship this season when arguably I think the instructors, uh, when they re-add the card disposal and then they re-add the points to their name, they really do stand the best chance. I still believe, and this is my take on it, that McLaren still have the best car in general on the grid right now. It's just that sometimes, I guess, even when they had the best car, like certain tracks, um, yeah, I mean, some cars were just even better, but it's only track specific. But I say in general, McLaren has had one of the, if not the best car of the season. So I guess in that sense, you know, they, they really need to, to, to fight for the championship very, very seriously for the last two races with Ferrari. And hopefully they're able to secure that. But otherwise, I think from the drivers, I guess it's okay. Um, yeah, both drivers didn't really show the best of pace this weekend, but probably could just be due to be the fact that the package is just not suited for the track. But next week will be very, very telling in my opinion, especially I think a lot of high hopes, even for me, like how McLaren can perform in Qatar, like the hopes are there. So I do hope that they're able to, to do something and, and really get the best result next weekend. Well, I think I've talked enough about this team. Um, fantastic. I don't have anything more to say. Um, I think throughout this entire video, it's just my constant praise for Mercedes. They were really the shock for me. Um, didn't expect that to happen at all whatsoever. Uh, could be because of cold temperatures again, which is why like they had such a good car. Um, and even they admit like when they were in a hotter condition, like the car just didn't seem to turn out properly. So again, it just because of all the elements that came into place for them this weekend, and that was why they able and they took the most out of it, which is you, that's why you got to give credit to the team, right? Sometimes the cars at its best, but let's say a reliability issue kicks in and I push finish the race, it's points lost essentially. So Mercedes did everything perfectly this weekend, perfect execution, albeit you know the Hamilton uh, Q3 problem, but he did what he could to get back into P2, so I, I don't know what else we can ask for that. Mercedes should be very, very happy from, from this weekend. Um, another 1-2 for them really this season, so great, great job from, from Mercedes. So I don't have anything more to say. Whether or not they're going to emulate this next weekend, probably on paper, I'd say they're going to be competitive. Would they be the best car again? I don't know. I mean, if they do, then wow, uh, it's going to be another really good weekend for Mercedes. I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I, I I can't seem to tell. So I guess you have to wait till next week to find out. But otherwise, this weekend, I think Mercedes should be absolutely pleased. Toto Wolf should be smiling and not smashing tables and chairs and doors. Uh, good to reference there as well. Uh, but otherwise, yeah. Perfect weekend for Mercedes, in my opinion. Perfecto. Alright, as for racing balls, obviously Sonoda did really well to get into Q3 and to finish in the points. So, good job from Sonoda's side. Lawson, I felt, yeah, not a very good weekend from him. I was emulating like a Danny Ricardo, I guess, uh, when Sonoda is sort of seeing the limelight and Liam Lawson is just not performing. He sort of did okay, I think, when he first got into the car um, in the first couple of races. But after that, I think it's just been, you know, dwindling a little bit so i'm um, not exactly too sure where uh the pace has gone for him but uh you know i think it's something that they're gonna have to look through again uh dig deep really liam lawson and uh, hopefully in the last race he's able to contribute i mean i'm quite sure honda honda i mean honda but i'm quite sure racing bulls they are trying their best to fight for sixth place and again you need two drivers to really push as much as they can i mean sonodo is doing his side of the his side of the job but at the same time obviously also needs um Lawson now to really go and fight for them as well. So, um, but otherwise, I think it was an average weekend in general, um, if you were to put really an average uh, from both drivers. But so, no, it was a really, really good weekend. I think um, when I was the way I saw him in the race, he was really competitive, he was really fighting for places. So, good race from Sonoda, really average race from Leo Lawson. And ultimately, I think for racing balls in general, it's an okay weekend. Um, I mean, at least they had points on the board. I mean, mathematically, it's always still possible to them for them to finish sixth. But yeah, I mean, looking at the probability-wise, like at least they have a couple of points on board, and 
they're still in to a certain extent you know still still fine for it because each place is like worth like maybe up, upwards of like 10 million odd so it's important for them to really ensure that they have they have that um they have those points really in case they want to fight for it and any any movement up the constructors would mean a lot of prize money and that contributes to the budget for next year so this is why i still feel that racing ball should continue to fight all the way to the end of the season for the constructors all righty red bull um nothing much to say really um straightforward the slapping champion perez still the same story uh, whether or not they're going to focus on the, on the constructors i'm not exactly too sure at this point in time i think they probably conceded that as well considering how perez is not necessarily fighting in terms of points so i don't know really i mean um could be the end i guess uh, for the constructors for red bull and now like i think they should just focus on celebrations with max um and ultimately just acknowledge that they've still had a really successful season ultimately it's just that yeah i mean constructors is not just one driver's efforts right it's got to be two um and this year's season has been really telling like just one person's effort is not going to be enough for the championship it wasn't like last year when despite having such a competitive car and perez not scoring that many points but because of Verstappen scoring that many points and winning all rate all but one race um yeah i mean that was why he, they won the championship that easily but this season it really shows that even Verstappen scoring that many points isn't able to carry red bull to, to a very high position uh in the championship because of how the other two teams are fighting for that you know they've had two drivers who were bringing in points week in week out so yeah um, I think like Red Bull are pro probably given up on that and I think all they can do now is just really focus on the glory of Max right now and look forward to next season again and see how they're going to build. I think with regards to whether or not Perez is going to keep his seat um, despite having a contract, I'm not exactly too sure what they're thinking. It could be dropped, uh, it's always just a matter of time and I guess we're just waiting really for any announcement to drop. But in the event he actually does get dropped, I really believe that they should put Yuki Tsunoda in the Red Bull. He's been at rb or alpha tauri or whatever it is that he has been, has been called for so many years now for i think his fourth season now fourth or fifth season in formula one so he's been showing like a lot of maturity yuki Tsunoda. as i said would he be able to take the fight to the stappen or probably not but would he be a very good second driver i think considering how he's been performing right now i mean sure but ultimately again when you look at how perez was doing so well at racing ball at racing balls racing point and when he came to red bull he was struggling that could also happen but I think if you were to really choose someone who deserved to, to replace Perez, my money is on Sonoda, or somehow Carlos Sainz uh, is able to move, get the switch essentially from Williams to, to Red Bull. Um, but I don't know if that's going to be very good in terms of the dynamics of the team. But and I don't even know if he, if they're able to do that. Like Sainz has even raced a race for Williams and he's already moving again to, to Red Bull. So, I mean, the driver market is still open. Ultimately, there is still one place. Uh, with four racing balls no one has signed for that seat yet so everything is still open so i i guess fans are just waiting but obviously now with the drivers championship done and dusted i think now we're more focused on the constructors and just enjoying the remaining two races to come but i think that's the story for red bull right now just enjoy the moment but we prepared to and i think they are already prepared and i think they have already um conceded the constructors and of course with this team williams i've said enough about them and i don't want to say much again but yeah disappointing from them um not good enough 100% uh let's say with the crash that means like the, the budget that they have for the rest of the season is obviously very limited now um and again both cars not really scoring points this weekend uh, Albon with another DNF but that's not able to catapult him up the field if he even had the if he, if he had the chance really yeah just a bad bad race uh weekend as well for Williams and I think it's something to forget the only thing they can do now is just look forward to the next two races and see what other points are able to salvage. That's pretty much it, I have to say, for Williams. Talked about them quite a bit in this episode. So um, just to wrap things up quickly, yeah, that's why I feel about Williams. And I think that will be it, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. As I said, this video is still going to come out. But as I said, the Qatar Grand Prix one, the pre-race app, um, it's already pre-recorded so what you see that is not based on what happened in vegas like in terms of my predictions and stuff there will no there will be no venture of vegas actually um but with regards to the post race yet for qatar no guarantees for that one i'll try my best to get it out or maybe even abu dhabi i can't guarantee that maybe 
you will just have to wait for like an end of season a review kind of video but yeah uh, just get discussing again in the comments down below what you guys felt of this particular grand prix i felt it was pretty interesting to watch pretty fun a lot of things have happened some things are have been secured as well uh at least for the driver's side of the house but yeah that's it for me i uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video drop a like if you have enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here and of course uh, comment down below how you felt the weekend has been and maybe predictions for next weekend as well but that'll be it from me for today thank you very much for watching i will see you guys next time until then good bye